going to have it in Jesus. Let's, let's close our eyes for prayer. You tell the Lord, Oh Lord, another level. Oh Lord, another level. Oh Lord, a higher level. Oh Lord, a greater level. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name this morning. Thank you for every child of God here, every minister here, every brother, every sister here. Lord, you have chosen us not to fail, but to succeed. You have chosen us not to be defeated, but to overcome. You have chosen us so that we'll bear fruit in the kingdom. You have chosen us so that this new year we'll see new results in Jesus' name. We are praying that whatever it is you should do in every heart, every life, everyone. Oh Lord, we pray there will be nothing that will hinder you in Jesus' name. And all the resources we need, all the protection we need, all the power we need, all everything that we need, you grant to everyone so we can be a success in the ministry in Jesus' name. No evil will touch your people. No calamity will come to their church, will come to their ministry, will come to their family, or will come to their personal lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray the joy of the Lord that you have given us will see it only in our life. And Lord, anything that has blocked our mind, blocked our brain to still walk in the same road that is into our destination, oh Lord, we cancel everything in Jesus' name. We will succeed. We will overcome. We will get to the next level. We're going to be different. Even some will not recognize us in Jesus' name. So angels and let them minister to the needs of people. Everything we read, he see it in every minister here. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down. Today we're looking at angelic intervention for a praying church angelic intervention for a praying church we're looking at acts of the apostles we look at the, the church of the first century and this is the 21st century and the lord wants to do the same thing that he did for that church he wants to do that in ministry in your church where you find yourself and I want to tell you that the people we're reading about here today, they didn't know that this will happen. They didn't expect this will happen. God went beyond their expectation. God will go beyond your expectation. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Here we're told that the church can pray because Peter was in the prison. What was he in the prison for? What was he in prison for? He was in prison for the preaching of the gospel. And uh, Herod had taken James and he had uh, beheaded him. And because of that, these people, are, uh, you know, Herod had thought, well, this is what happened also. Herod didn't understand. And many people don't understand. I was, we don't understand when things happen. That how could that happen to James? And now they are taking, they are taking Peter. Maybe the same thing will happen. I think you need to, you know, think about the scriptures a little bit. James and John came to the Lord Jesus. James, the old one, and John, the younger one. We want to see it on this side, and then on this side. And Jesus said, you don't know what you are asking for. Are you able to drink a cup I'll drink, and then go through what I will go? And they said, yes, Lord. And Jesus said, you will. But to sit on this side and to sit on that side, not for me to decide, is in the hands of my Father. 
You see, when they were seeking for that position, they didn't understand. When their mother came, look for me here, they didn't understand. And eventually, when Jesus asked them, Are you able to drink this cup? And he was talking about the cup of death. A kind of, <clears throat> a kind of death that is not the natural death. Are you able to do this? And they wanted the position so much. They wanted that kind of um, name tied to so much that they said, yes, we can and we will. And Jesus, I have found that you'll drink the cup, but you'll not get the position. And eventually, Jesus went away. And all these things happened. And Herod took Jesus. He spread the cup, he drank it, he died. Angel was a saint. No angel was saint. You see, we don't know. You cannot interpret what happens to Mr. So and so, Mrs. So and so, Brother So and so, Sister So and so, Overseer So and so, Overseer such and such. Let's just be careful to understand that God watches and He listens to everything we desire, everything we need. And when we make a commitment, and the Lord asks us question, we must be able to decipher, interpret, discern the commitment we are making. But now let's come back to Peter. Here is Peter, and Peter was in the prison. But he wasn't surprised, and he wasn't a kind of take back. He was thinking, what's going to happen? Look at this in verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleep between two soldiers. Well, you see here, there's no worry, there's no anxiety. One of two things will happen. God either did me, he does, why do I lose, lose my sleep? Or God may decide that this is the day to go. If he decides the day to go home, why do I lose my sleep? It may be right hand side, left hand side. And since I cannot change, what God has ordained? Why do I lose my sleep? People worry and worry and worry. And they do not understand, the worry will not change anything. And there are two possibilities. The Lord can take me out of that thing, or the Lord can give me the strength to bear it. And somebody has, you know, born that before me, Stephen, he was not an apostle. And James, he was my colleague. And so was the big deal. That's why he slept. You know, why do we torture ourselves and torment ourselves because of the things that are happening? And because this happened and this happened, now they put me over here, and this will be the next, and you die before you die. And you torture yourself before they torment you. And you kill yourself before they kill you. But he went to sleep because you, whatever happened, God is in control. I said, it's in control. It will be in control in Jesus' name. And then this was bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door catch the prison. And watch, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and smote his side, and raised him up, and saying, Arise, up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Remember, the church was praying. God is praying, and uh, Jesus is praying for you. The Holy Spirit is interceding for you. Our leaders are praying for you. Of course, our whole church, they are praying for us as well. And God is going to answer every beat of the good prayer. They pray for you in Jesus' name. And then we are told, And the angel said unto him, Gird thy sandals. Do you understand that the light that shone, all those keepers and the people that were bodyguard for the government and are watching over him, you know, did you see that light? All the voice of the angel speaking to Peter, saying, Arise, do this. All those uh, people, they did the voice. Everything that happened, Peter could see, Peter could hear, Peter could feel. All the people that were surrounded, keep him in the prison. They, were, they did not see. You know, some people say, My problem is, they are telling me. They are following me around. Everything I'm thinking at, they know. Every good thing they know, they know. Before I even put it into operation, into reality, they are hurt and they spoil it. Whatever God doesn't want Satan to hear about you, he will not hear. 
whatever he doesn't want, all those soldiers around you that say, we, we got it, tomorrow is the D day. And this man, oh, look at him, he's still he's sleeping. He doesn't know that tomorrow is the time Herod is going to take his head off. And the angel came and the angel smote him and those who are not conscious. And he rose up and were not conscious. And the chains fell off. Don't you know when chains fall off, it's going to make some great sound on the ground. But he didn't hear. And the light shone and he didn't see. And then the voice came and he didn't hear. The enemy will not hear the good things God is doing for you. There's nobody that can hear that. Why are we so worried and we're so anxious? They have known, they have heard. You know, I, they, I want to go to that place and a good place. But if I'm going now, they are following me. Nobody will follow you. Because you will go there, you will go and succeed. Everything God had planned that you are going to have, you are going to have it in Jesus' name. Take all these fears off your heart, all these vain imaginations off your heart, that they will not allow me to succeed. Nobody can hinder you. They will not allow me to move on. Nobody will hinder you. They will not allow me to, they will block my way. I declare to you by the name of, by the anointing that breaks the yoke, all the blockages in your life, they're taken away in Jesus' name. And then we are told, he said, the angel said unto him, verse 8, Get thyself and bind, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And all this time, all those soldiers were still standing attention. They didn't sleep because they were awake. But they didn't see. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. You know, our brother yesterday, our brother was preaching on the Bible doctrine, what was leading us in prayer. He said, you know, in that church, in that church, all those, uh, you know, witches, wizards, this and this, that's come there and all that. I said, this brother, he has finished his, uh, you know, message. He has finished his uh, Bible teaching. And that thing that he said is not part of his Bible teaching. Where did you see those people? I can see them. I said, I can see them. Anywhere I go, and anywhere you go this year, if anybody is there before you get there, clear out of the way in Jesus' name. You know, the, the mindset that we have, and we think that uh, somebody, there's a witch there, there's somebody there. Now, even if there's a witch, what does he have? Evil spirit. What do I have? Holy Spirit. Now, which one is greater? I'm going to, you know, I just say Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, evil spirits want to fight, and I like to watch a fight between Holy Ghost and evil spirit. And that evil spirit, you know, he'll smell pepper. And there's something greater than pepper. What is that now? Oh, alligator pepper. What is that? It will smell whatever it is in Jesus' name. There's nothing for you to fear this year. Because the Lord is going before you. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. And the angels of God, the Lord will send them. And they will protect you in your way. You will not dash your foot against the stone in Jesus' name. And then we are told him, and he went out and followed him, and wished not, he knew not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But he thought he saw a vision. It will look like a dream. Is it me? Is this real? Where am I? Am I dreaming? Your dream will become a reality. Verse 10, when they were past the first and the second watch, they came unto what kind of gate? Iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. They need have to stay there, stand there. I command you, in the name of Jesus, open. In the name of Jesus, open. You must not hinder me. This year there is no fighting. This year there is no struggle because everything is done already in Jesus' name. The iron gate recognized. See, the iron gate that does not have eyes to see, ears to hear, I did not know the steps of the people as they were coming. The iron gate knew. Is it not created by God? You know, all the leaves that the people put together and they want to use it to charm a child of God, was not that leaf created by God? The iron gate, was it not created by God? The gun and the sword, were those irons that they made the gun with not created by God? The bullet and whatever, is it not created by God? Are you going to take something created by God 
to each one harm a child of God, a minister of God, that God has given an assignment to you. And then you take what God created to destroy the purpose of God. Will God open his eyes and accept that to happen? Never. All those things were created by God. The earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. And anywhere we go, all those things will work for us in Jesus' name. If the iron gate will open by itself, every door before you will open by itself in Jesus' name. And then it says, And they passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. When Peter was come to himself, that is, he now woke up from his dream. He thought it was a dream before. When he got to, he got to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel, and he has delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. God will deliver you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him. And having made blasters, the king's chamberlain, their friends desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a such day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not the voice of a man. And immediately, tell me, and immediately, tell me, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was, and he was eating of worms, and give up the ghost. Can you see some interchange there? What I mean is, Herod wanted Peter dead. And the days that your days were appointed for Peter, in this same chapter, that death came upon his head. The angel of the Lord that delivered Peter, and those miracles happened, that same angel stayed around. Let me see what is still going to happen. That Herod, let me see what he will do. And then it came to pass, as Peter was free, that now Herod did what he did, and that same angel that delivered the person he wanted to kill, that angel now God sent him to destroy him, and he died. He wasn't even given a decent burial. Worms ate him up. That's why we're, say, we're sending warning to anybody. That will try to touch any of you here this year, they'll be very careful. If they don't, you know, give up their own lives and die prematurely, and then the evil they wish for a minister of God. Now you understand how our country protects, you know, our Mr. President, how, they, how our country protects our governors. And, you know, we are the people that God has chosen to watch over the people of God. He's given us a position that is greater than any position on earth. And because of that, he's specially watching over you. Heaven is interested in you, interested in your life, interested in your success. And when God has ordained that this man, this woman, I put him in this position, I put her in this position, nobody can trifle with the appointment of God. And if they try to do it, well, they'll tell the story not here, they'll tell the story on the other side. Thank God we're protected. And the angels of God are still in business and they're still working. I'm going to look at this in three perspectives. Number one, the past manifestations of angels. The past manifestations of angels. Number two, the present ministry of angels. Number two, the present ministry of angels. Number three, the prevailing might of angels. The prevailing might of angels. Number one is the past manifestations of angels. I hope you know that when Jacob was going on the journey he was going, 
the Lord showed him that he was not alone and God favored that man. That's why everything Jacob went through, the Lord really supported him and the Lord really was with him. Look at this in chapter 28 of Genesis. Genesis chapter 28 verse 12. It says in verse 12, And he dreamt, he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on each. The angels ascending and descending on the ladder. Here was a Jacob who was going to a strange land, a place he had never been. There are times God will call you to go to a strange land, a place you have never been. And something might have happened at home that makes it necessary for you to go there. And while he was going there, he was sleeping. And he wasn't sleeping in a comfortable place. And yet, the ladder was between here and heaven. There's connection between you and heaven. I said between you and heaven. This morning as I'm talking, I don't want, I, that's why I'm not using the word us, I'm not using the word they, I'm talking to you in particular. And I'm saying between you and heaven, there's a ladder in Jesus' name. And the angels are coming up and down, ascending and descending upon that ladder. They are watching if Jacob will have any need. They are watching if there will be any danger confronting Jacob. They were watching if there will be anything that will necessitate the intervention of heaven in the life of Jacob. And the Lord is saying the same thing about you as he's watching over you. And the angels are watching to see that there are whatever it is, the challenges you have, the Lord himself will see you through in Jesus' name. And uh, we we'll see that in the life of Jacob, even later, how God himself sent his angels. And he said, I saw a great host. And that great host that he saw, he protected his life. Not only that, even Abraham before him. You know that how Abraham had from the angel, and the angel repeated the blessings of the Lord. In fact, Abraham was so conscious of those angels that he said in Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. I'm reading there from verse 6. Genesis chapter 24, we're looking at uh, verse 6. What uh, Abraham told the servant that he said to go and have uh, take a wife for Isaac. And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son. See that again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, my nativity, and which spake unto me, that swear unto me, saying unto thy seed, will I give this land, he shall send his angel before thee. Abraham knew, Abraham knew that God had angels ministering to the people of God, and he said, I'm sure, just go. You're going to find a wife for my son. God will send an angel before you. We know the story, how he just got, see how simple it was. How he got the wife. And see, you know, some of us, uh, you know, I think one of our brothers again preaching yesterday, he said, we we'll pray and pray and pray, and then to get married is so difficult. Every difficult thing in your life, area of marriage, God will simplify this year in Jesus' name. All the ways you have, you know, I prayed and said to this uh, person, the will of God, and she said, you don't know what you're talking about, I am not. And then I tried this, I tried this, maybe I'll go to the village and get somebody. God is about to open the door for you, don't make that step, don't make that mistake. Because this year is the year of an open door. And everything you have tried, I wanted a wife, I wanted a husband, I'm looking for children, and they have not come. I'm, I'm saying that this day the Lord will send this angel before you. Before you open your mouth to talk to that person, the Lord is appointing for you. The Lord will have prepared the way in Jesus' name. And when he prepares the way, don't walk by sight. Don't walk by sight. Just know, you know, Eliezer, or whoever the name of the person is, had never seen this lady before. Isaac had never seen this lady before. How are we going to match together? How are we going to be compatible? Leave that to the Lord. The Lord who has chosen her for you, who has chosen him for you, will look into the compatibility problem in Jesus' name. Look at verse 40. Verse 40 here. In this chapter 24, it says, And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk, will send his angel before thee, and prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred, and of my father's house. It was so. I said it was so. It will become so in your life in Jesus' name. 
Now Elijah, this great prophet of God, became tired. Oh, you're tired. You know, people around you, well, they might make fun of you. Uh-huh. Elijah is tired. Elijah is discouraged. Elijah is going through depression. Elijah is going through this and that. But you know, heaven never makes fun of servants of God. Heaven never derides, never ridicules any child of God, any man of God, any woman of God that is going through some turbulent times. You see, God does not easily forget what you've done in the past. Men forget, people forget. If you have been, you know, doing good and you've labored there and labored there, evangelized there, you've taught people here, you raised a great congregation there, and now you've gone here and there, you know, just one day, because you thought I'm the only one remaining, why is this happening to me? Why is this? I don't even see any other brother, any other sister coming to me to encourage me. All I hear is that Jezebel is after me. And then you just look, I'm giving this up. The people who hear that, they say, uh -huh, look at Elijah. He knows how to bring fire from heaven. He knows how to do this. They deride. But you know, God never derides or depreciates. Does not belittle. A real child of God, he will not belittle you. You know, sometimes it's when you've gone here, you've gone there, you've labored and you've done this, and then you overhear. Anybody say something negative about you, and they say, we're going to finish him, we're going to finish her. Then you say, why? Before we even hear that, she, you know, you've left your location, you've run away already. And when somebody hears that you've run away, here we are in the service, maybe somebody's supposed to preach. And then we'll say, his name is everything, is there, but we don't know what is happening to him. There's so much pressure in his life. There's so much discouragement that he says, am I going to stand in that place and be talking to them? What am I going to say to them? I cannot talk, I'm discouraged. And then the fellow goes to hide himself somewhere, we'll look for him here and here and and then eventually maybe we'll choose an alternative, let somebody preach. And then later when we see him, where, where, where did you go? You are supposed to preach this time. And the fellow breaks down weeping like a little child. And he says, Pastor, what can I do? I'm going through so much in my, in my location. I don't even want to be a pastor anymore. You know, sometimes we'll say, what kind of thing is this? Don't be a child. Be a man. And this and that God never says anything like that. There is an Elijah. Let me show you. In First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 3. And when he saw that, when he saw that, he arose. And he went for his life. And he came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah. And left a servant there. He said, Servant, I don't need you anymore because I don't want to preach anymore. I don't want to confront all these prophets of Baal anymore. I've done it and my fingers are burnt. I've done it and Jezebel is after me. You just go anywhere you want to go. But he himself went in this journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might, what? Tell me. Tell me. You know, anybody can, anybody can say that at the time of, uh, at the time of discouragement. He said, Lord, it's enough. Now I want to die. And God said, no, I'm not going to answer that prayer. Every other good prayer you pray, I'm going to answer. You know, God sees our prayers. God can sort of examine the prayers and he says, this is good, I will answer. This is good, I will answer. That is good, I will answer. Ah, ah, this one, 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 this this prayer of discouragement. This one is not the prayer of faith. This is the prayer of fear. This one is not the prayer of faith. This one is the prayer of dejection. Elijah, that one, I remove that one. You know, God examines your prayers. Every bad prayer you pray, God says, I'm not going to answer that. Anything that will injure you, anything that will destroy you, anything that will say, I don't want it again, I don't, let it go, let it go. God will not let it go. Those good things will happen and remain in your life in Jesus' name. You would have thought that, if I, okay, I want to die, uh, you want to die, okay, you will die. He cannot do that to Elijah. He will not do that to you in Jesus' name. Look at what happened now. And he lay and he slept on the juniper tree. And behold, then an angel touched him. An angel touched him. An angel touched him and said unto him, 
Arise and eat. Have you ever eaten angel's food before? I said, have you eaten angel's food before? Who knows? This year might be your year. I'm looking, I'm looking at this man, Elijah. The first time I see him eating, I never saw Elijah eating before, but the first time I saw him eating, it was a raven that brought the food. The next time I see Elijah eating, it was a woman that brought the food. And I see, and I see the next level. Do you see the next level there? The first level, it was a raven that brought food to this man. The next level, it was a woman that brought this food to him. And the next level now, you are there already. I said you are there already. It was an angel that brought the food unto him. Don't you ever see the same food? You know, the food brought by the raven, then by the woman, then by the angel. God is upgrading everything in your life. That what you had before, there's a step higher. What you had before, there's a step higher. What you're having now, there's going to be a step higher. And by the time I see you next time, a beloved brother was praying this man and saying that, you know, sometimes we get this first month, second month, third month, and fourth month, everything is okay. By the time we come back again, that one is gone down. This, and he prayed for us, and I believe that prayer with all my heart. That this time, it will not be like that in Jesus' name. That what we are getting of this next level, when you reach there, you are going to stay there in Jesus' name. We are going to be hearing stories of revival, and stories of breakthrough, and stories of success, and stories that will encourage our hearts in all the places we come from, in Jesus' name. The angel said, arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. You know the story, it was when he then got to the mount of God, that God began to speak to him. And God never condemned this man. Never, never condemned the man. And eventually, when he was about to go, you know the story, Second Kings chapter 2. In Second Kings chapter 2, he just told Elisha, you know, not speaking about death anymore. After you eat angel's food, you can't talk about death anymore. That at that time, once you eat that food, you will eat something this morning. And when that thing gets you soon to your spirit, all that dejection and depression, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. And now Elijah said to Elisha, you know that I'm going today, and I'm not going by death, because angels of God with chariots, they are coming from heaven, and they're going to take me to heaven, ask me what you want before I go. The man was on top, he was, he was in charge, he was not confident, and you know, all that depression will vanish away. Everything, you know, you've been bending your head and bending your whatever it is, and it's like you cannot lift up your head, lift up your eyes, and lift up your heads, because today, a new day has begun in your life in Jesus name. Then the angel took him to heaven. The angels took him to heaven. Not one angel, not just chariots and chariots and chariots. And then he dropped the mantle and the mantle came upon Elisha. It will come upon your life today in Jesus name. Now point number two is the present ministry of angels. Present ministry of angels. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 13. Hebrews Chapter 1, we're looking at verse 13. It's telling us about the present day ministry of angels. Hebrews chapter 1, we're looking at verse 13 and verse 14. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make my enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits, angels? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth? To minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. We are the heirs of salvation. And they are sent forth to minister unto us. He will minister to you in Jesus' name. And then we're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 17. Acts chapter 5 verse 17. Then the high priest rose up. And all that, all that day, and all day that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and, and were filled with indignation. And they laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. You see what happened to them? You know, sometimes when you go back to your location, and maybe something happens, and somebody threatens you, or they try to do something, you do not remember that beyond what man can do, there's something else God can do. 
And I said, is there something else God can do? It's going to, it's going to hurt. It's not going to allow anybody to dump you somewhere. It can serrate you. Limit you, confine you somewhere. That where you ought to be having your ministry, that we cannot see you, we will see you. I said, we will see you. And you'll be on top in Jesus' name. They put them there and then look at verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand, speak in the temple to the people all the words of this, of this, of life. The Lord is going to bring you out. You know, he sent his angels. They said, Come out of there. That's not your place. That's imprisonment. That's not your place in Jesus' name. All that place behind the stool or below the stool, see down there, behind a coaching anywhere, and they're trying to hide your talent away and hide all your abilities away. Try to hide all the gifts of God in your life. And they say, stay there. That's not your place. You are coming out in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 26. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 8 verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. You see the Acts of the Apostles, 1st century church. And this is 21st century church. The angels were much in oppression. The angels were there. And it says, the angels said, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is the desert. You see angels directing even the ministry, where to minister. And people will not understand. And that's why this year, I pray that God will take us to the next level in Jesus' name. You see people, how would you understand this? Philip was in Samaria. And there was a great revival, big revival in Samaria. And uh, you know, people got converted, demons were cast out, people were healed, great things happening. And then the angel said, get out of that place and then go to the desert place, no church there. Go to the desert place, no fellowship there. Go to the desert place, no workers there. There's just somebody there traveling. Go and see him and go tell him the word. How do you, how do you take a person from a mighty revival in a whole big city and then you take him to another place? You know, if it was Peter that said that, Peter and John came and then they saw the great walk in Samaria. If they said, Philip, go out of this place and go to Gaza and go to the desert, they will say, uh uh, the apostles are jealous, the apostles are envious because they see that the Philip now is doing even greater than they have done and because of that they are so jealous they have taken him from Samaria and they take him to the desert no we need to understand let's have spiritual eyes to see spiritual minds to understand and I pray God will give us understanding and then look at Philip on his own side did Philip say me leave this big revival and leave all these great people, the whole city, after me. And they know that I am the great evangelist. He didn't say that. He went to that place. And look at that in verse 27. We're told, and he arose. He didn't waste time at all. Or confer with flesh and blood. Or be asking some people in Samaria, should I go, should I not go? There's a message I'm hearing. They have not heard. They didn't see the angel. They didn't hear the angel. They probably will be able to. They will tell him, how can you do that? You can't go. How can you leave this? They just use your brain, use your mind, use your reasoning. That's not reasonable. How can you leave this and go to a place you've never known? That's a strange kind of voice. But look at this. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of uh, the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot and he read uh, Isaiah the prophet. And then the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip went and Philip ran thither to him and heard him reach the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Well, that brought salvation to that man eventually. Look at verse 39. And when they were come up out of the water, Tell me what follows. Read it out very well. 
the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip and took him back to Samaria? Tell me out loud. No. How does God work like that? Mighty revival in Samaria. And the angel of the Lord took that man, told that man, Arise, this is the place to go. Only one person was there. Moving from Samaria to this place with only one person, and then when that is done, when that was done, the spirit of the Lord caught him away. And then the eunuch he saw him no more, and he went on his way. And Philip was found at Asotos in another place. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. He landed in another place. The angel of the Lord will minister to us in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, verse 22. Here was Paul the Apostle on his, on his journey. In his journey going to Rome. And um, there was real storm on the sea. It was like everybody was going to perish. But again, we have the ministry of the angels. We are told in verse 22. Chapter 27. And we are looking at verse 22. And now I exhort you to check. There shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the sheep. For there stood by me this night the angel of God. The angels are always near. And whenever there is any trouble, he will come to our rescue in Jesus' name. He says, the angel of the Lord stood by me, and whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Everybody associated with you, he will be, be protected, she will be protected in Jesus' name. No evil will come upon your life. People near you, no evil will come upon them in Jesus' name. It says, well, for such be of good cheer, because I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Everything you are hearing today, concerning the promise of God for you, it shall be. Concerning the prophecy of God in your life, it shall be. Concerning the protection of God for you, it shall be. It shall be even as it was told you in Jesus' name. This year is going to be a great year, a wonderful year. Your personal life, something that never happened in the good sense, will happen in Jesus' name. In your family, the kind of joy, the kind of bliss, the kind of peace and the kind of progress you never saw before your family, it will come to pass this year in Jesus' name. In your professional life, in the work of your hand, everything you touch this year will be a blessing in Jesus' name. You believe God, I believe God, it shall be even as it was told me, it shall be in Jesus' name. Point number three now is the prevailing might of angels. The prevailing might of angels. Angels are powerful. I said angels are powerful. And when those angels come to rescue, they do things that you never can imagine. And the Lord is going to send his angels to minister in your life, in your ministry, even this year in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 37. Isaiah 37, I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass, when King Ezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and, Shab and Shabna, the scribe, and the elders of the priest covered with sackcloth, unto Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. And he said unto him, Thus said Ezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, but the angels are nearby. And it's a day of rebuke, but the angels are soon going to operate. And of blasphemy, but the angels are coming. And then he says, For the children are come to the birth, and there is not there's not strength to bring forth. It may be that the Lord thy God will hear the words of Rabshaki, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God. God has heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that is led. So the servant of the king of Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And they were told, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shalt thou say to your master, Thus says the Lord, 
be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard. And I'm telling you now, this morning, any word you have heard from your enemies, be not afraid of the words you have heard. Anything you heard, a night, 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 uh, night, uh, mere, or it is in a, in a bad dream, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the words you heard in the dream and the day where with the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him. And he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land. And I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. I thought you would say, Amen. Look at verse 37 here. Look at what God did. And it says in uh, verse 37, verse 37, it says so. Shinakarib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. They will return. They will go back. They will not hurt you. All that threats and all that, uh, you know, kind of boasting, I'll deal with him, I'll do this, I'll do that. They will not succeed in Jesus' name. And it came to pass as a worship in the, um, in a worship in the house of Nimrod, his God, that the Adam, the, the names of these uh, gods, funny gods, difficult to pronounce. Strange God. Everybody says strange God. Adramelech and Sherezan, his sons, smote him with the sword and escaped into the land of Armenia. You see, he even died. He thought uh, Ezekiah will die. Ezekiah did not die. He was the one that died. You will not die. If Jesus tarries and we're going to have another congress uh, next uh, year, uh, 2013, where are you? I said, where are you? I said, where are you? Nothing will shift your position. Nothing will take your right away from you. Where you are, where God has planted you, there is where you will be in Jesus' name. I but the army that the army that he brought, look at verse 14. And we're reading now from verse 14. It says, Hezekiah received the letter. And then in his hand, he went before the Lord and he prayed. He said, O oh God, I'm looking at verse 16, O oh God of Israel, that that dwellest between the cherubims. And then verse 17, incline your ear, O oh Lord. And then he said in verse 18, of a truth, O oh Lord, the king of Assyria, see what they have done. And they have cast this and they have cast that. And eventually he said, Now see. But you know, the Lord himself defeated all those people. And the angel of the Lord destroyed all those powers of darkness. Look at verse 36, the conclusion of it. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. One angel smote, smote one eighty-five thousand valiant soldiers. And then it says, and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses they have died i said they have died i said they have died look at them what can they do now against your life and you are still alive and ezekiah was still alive and the people of god was still alive you will still be alive now look at this this is yours i said this one is yours today it is yours this week it is yours. This year it is yours. I'm not going to tell you the chat. I'm going to test you this morning. You know some people, they say, Pastor, your converse, I didn't hear. You know, that I, try, I help you every time. I say, you know, Isaiah chapter this, chapter this. And while you're still looking at Isaiah chapter this, four times I say this one. I'm not going to tell you this one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Praise the Lord. You got this one? Open it yourself. This is yours. I said, this is yours. I'm reading something to you that heaven has said about you this morning. He that dwelleth, and she that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You will say to the Lord, He is my refuge. 
He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth and His shield shall be thy buckler, shall, thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil before you this year. There shall no evil before you this year. There shall no evil before you this year. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Here it is, here it is. Get ready now, get ready now. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all thy ways. Why don't you stand up and say, I accept that. I accept that. Act. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. That's your story right there. That's your protection right there. That's the promise of the Lord for you right there. That's the prophecy of the Lord for your life this year right there. He'll give his angels charge. He'll give his angels commandment. He'll give his angels duty and reason responsibility over you. You will not dash your foot against a stone. Everything that comes against you this year, you will walk over. You will walk over. You are going somewhere. You are going somewhere. You are going somewhere. You are going somewhere. Every evil before you will vanish. Every power of darkness before you will be crushed. Every bad sin in your life, every bad thing that tries to militate again against your life, against your progress, everything this year is gone. This is a new year, this is a great year, and the ministry of angels, ministry of angels will be watching over your life, watching over your life, watching over your life, watching over your life. God will take care of you. He will take care of you. He will take care of you in the day, in the night, in the dream, in reality. Anywhere you go, everywhere you go, the protection of those angels will be around you, will be for you. It has not my fall by your side. Don't ever think it's coming to me. It shall not come. And 10,000 on your right hand. Don't you ever think it will be my turn. It will never be your turn. No evil will be your turn. No sickness will be your turn. No calamity will be your turn. No accident will be your turn. No power of darkness will be your turn. Good things this year. Better things this year. Great things this year. Greater things this year. Beautiful things this year. More beautiful things this year. The Lord has promised for you. The might of the angels. The great might of the angels. For us today. Prevailing over our lives. Prevailing in our lives. That's the promise of the Lord for you. That's the glory of the Lord on your behalf. That's what He has promised. That's what He's going to do. He cannot fail. He will not fail. He cannot fail. He will not fail. He cannot fail. He cannot fail. That's what He said. That's what He said. Whatever Shinakiri or Rakshaki, whatever they are saying. Don't mind them, don't even listen, don't even think about what they are saying. Because for you this year God has spoken good. 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 It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. You wake up in the morning and say, that is mine. You wake up in the morning, that is mine. And you check it up again. I know where I dwell. I, went, I know where I'm living. I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Dwelling and living in the secret place of the Most High. That's where you are this year. That's where you are this year. You're covered with the blood of the Lamb. You're protected by those mighty angels. He'll send his angels before you. 
Your son is saying yes before you. Whatever you have missed in the past, this is the year of recovery. This is the year of restoration. This is the year of provision. This is the year of prophecy fulfilled. It's a year of great revival. It's a year of great provision. God brought you to a position. And there might be people that are saying, Why is he there? Why is she there? Him down, bring her down. Impossible. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God appoints, no man will disappoint. It's yours. It's yours. And whatever days they wish for you, you are going to apply. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hey, that's enough. All right. Thank you, thank you. Hey. See the way I want Abuja for Takot clapping. Hey. I think, uh, you know, we we'll ought to go and have, uh, you know, some conferences in Abuja and also in Port Harcourt. Then when you get there, they'll clap for you, you'll never forget. <laughs> Amen. And Amen. See you this year now. See how big you are. See the glory of God upon you here. See the, you know, all the person, your way, all the, the world is clear for you this. And I see that they are walking, you are somewhere. I see Cindy, and I'm looking at her. I say, brother, is that you? I say, sister, is that you? I see you the head and the tail. 